Good afternoon. Welcome to a webinar from Linköping University. Uh, today we're going to learn a bit more about studying social sciences um, at Linköping University and this is aimed at EU citizens, uh, which means it's tuition uh, free. Um, but before we go into talking a bit more about our offerings and um, who we are, I'd like to introduce my guests. Would you like to? Yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Fleur. I'm from the Netherlands and I am a first year student in the Master of Science for Sustainable Development. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm Osa and I'm Associate Professor at Environmental Science Department. Thank you. And my name is Truth Winder and I'm a Communications Officer. Um, so, for this webinar, we're going to talk about why you should study social sciences at LIU, uh, a bit about both the academic side and expectations, and also Fleur's um, perspective and experiences of, of being here. Um, we're also going to talk about how to apply, uh, and I'm going to give you a, a quick refresher of who we are um, as a university. Um, and then we're going to open up for questions. So, we're going to talk for about 20 minutes, half an hour maybe, and then we're going to open up for questions from, from you guys. And at the bottom of your screen, there is a questions tab. Uh, put your questions in there and, and they'll be put to us later. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded and you can ask your questions later on uh, if you're watching the recording and they'll be forwarded to us. Right, let's have a look at the presentation. Right, so who are we? Uh, well, we are a full university, uh, which means we can award degrees at all levels. So it's bachelor, master's and doctoral degrees. There's 40,000 students, um, so there's, there's quite, a, quite a big campus. Um, 2,000 roughly are international, uh, and they come from a variety of, of countries. Um, do you know any other Dutch students? Yes, I do. I have yeah. one in my program. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and there's also exchange students and there is master's students. Um, we have four and a half thousand employees, so there's there's a lot of there's a lot of Great. faculty, a lot of colleagues and, and faculty and researchers. We're a young university. We were established in 1975, um, so next year we'll turn 50. Uh, but still, we're still under the top 50 under 50. Um, we've also always had an innovative educational approach. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Yeah, we've always had an innovative approach and, and in this, in this um, uh, slide you can actually see that we have three campuses, uh, two cities. We, we have a small campus in Stockholm as well, but that's for furniture studies. Um, but for social sciences, we're at Valla and you can see the modern student building. Uh, it's quite recent and it, it has the library and lots mm -hmm. of study places. My favourite building. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad, I'm mm -hmm. glad, because it was designed for you it's guys. very nice. Uh, it's called Studenthuset, which is student building. Uh, North Shopping has a few uh, programs as well. Uh, it's 40 kilometers north of Lean Shopping, and there's a, there's a free shuttle bus that takes students from one campus to the other. And there's also a university hospital campus, uh, but no social science programs there. It's just the, the, the medical faculty. Uh, right, next slide, please. Um, so, we have 30 master's programs and one bachelor program. Uh, we're going to see a bit later on of which, which programs we, uh, we actually offer within social sciences. Um, you can also choose different uh, streams within certain programs. Um, the, the campus, the main campus is Campus Valla. Uh, lots of study places, there are sports facilities. Um, you also have student study counselling. Uh, both in terms of the academic side, but you also have counsellors in, in, case, in case you're struggling. And there's a huge variety of student associations. Um, you can do robotics, you can do choirs, um, you can do law, you can do politics, there's, there's loads. Mm. And the next slide, please. Right, and these are our programmes. Um, so these are the social science programmes. Um, we'll talk a bit more uh, later uh, about them, but uh, yours is, if you've got something in the way, Science for Sustainable Development. Exactly. And that's the one you teach on yep. as well. Yeah. Um, about half of these, I think, are in Neu Shopping and, and half in Lin Shopping. Uh, next slide, please. This is the bit about how to apply. So this is the bit that I kind of, you know, you, you, you need this, this, this flow chart. Um, the most important thing is do your research. Uh, make sure you know what, what you're applying for. Um, check the requirements, make sure you're eligible. Um, if you meet the requirements and you're eligible, 
go ahead, go to universityadmissions.se. And the tricky bit for you who are EU students is you actually have two application rounds that you can apply for the social science programs. Um, the first application round is the, is the main one, the, the one that most of our international students apply in, and that closes on the 15th of January. Um, but there's also an, an application period that opens now, on the 15th of, of March and closes on the 15th of April. Um, this one is only really open for, the e for EU students because you don't need to apply for a residence permit, so you have time to come here. So what you then do is, once you've applied online, um, that's not the end of it. You then actually have, have to submit proof of fee exemption status and you do that by uploading a copy of your passport. Um, we don't know that you're Dutch or German or French unless you tell us so and you do that by uploading a copy of your passport. Check the country specific uh, requirements. You, have, you can find that at universityadmissions.se uh, that's really, really useful because, for example, if you're from Germany, you don't have to take an English test um, if you have studied English at a certain level um, throughout your school years. Um, so this, you know, if you if you know these things, you'll you'll be able to, you know, you you, you might save yourself a lot of work, really, uh, if you check that. Um, so you also then submit. So the submit so proof of, of fee exemption status is either first of February or second of May. Second of May is if you're applying now. Um, you then have to submit the documents. And if you're in the first um, cycle, the, the first admissions round, um, you can do both documents and proof of exemption um, on the first of February. But if you do an apply, if you're applying now, you have until the 20th of June to submit the documents that you need, and that's your. Um, it's either a syllabus um, sometimes, but it's your it's your transcript and your diploma. And if you're in your final year of studies, make sure that you actually have 150 ECTS credits now, because otherwise you won't have enough time uh, to to gain those. Then you'll find out either 21st of March. Uh, roughly around then, because obviously this will be for next year, but roughly then if you've been in the first application round and for the second application round it's 11th of July. And then there is a big, big difference um, between the two application rounds. Well, there's a another one I'll show you on the next slide, but the biggest difference is that in the second application round you have to accept your offer or you will lose your place. First round you don't have to accept your offer, but the second one you have to, and this is really, really important. And then next slide, please. Um, so basically this is a, just a quick recap, national online application process. And in the first selection round, you can apply for four programs. And in the second one, it is actually 12. Um, I've forgotten to update, but it's 12, but you can only be admitted to one. Um, and again, you need to reply. So online application, documenting fee exemption status, uh, submitting your documents, that's when your application will be assessed. Um, so, that's the application process. Do you remember it? Yeah, yeah. I think in my year I could only apply for three, actually. Okay. Yeah, but maybe that was specific for the Netherlands. I'm not sure, but uh, mm -hmm. that's nice that you can apply for four. four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or even 12 now. Yeah, but exactly. But still, nice. you still, you'll still only be admitted to one. So the order of priority is, is really, really important. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, that was the that part, the application process part. Um, let's talk a bit more about social sciences and social sciences at Linköping University. Why is it important? What, what, does, what does social sciences kind of bring to the table? For the society. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a great benefit for the society. I mean, we need social science both to understand the society and to improve it. There are so many changes, everything from climate to everything's going that we talked about before, that mobile phones and the development. So what we try to do is, of course, it should benefit for the society, but also in interaction with society and industry. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I would say it's really important. Mm -hmm. um, from your perspective, how come you chose this program and social sciences and, and why Lean Shopping University? Yeah, well, I think it's super important to uh, work with people. <laughs> That's, I think, what social science is all about. I wanted to work with people, although I really like the natural science aspect as well, also in my studies. 
um, everything comes down how we communicate things with each other, how we write and read. Um, everything is about how to connect with people um, and that's the way to learn as well. We learn from each other um, and I chose social science because I want to give my knowledge to the next generations as well. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I thought LIU was a very, it gave me a very fresh look on universities because it's so new. Um, and yeah, when I looked at the website, everything was very nicely done, very in innovative. Um, yeah, uh, it just catched me. Okay, yeah. good. And what has your experience been? It's been very nice. It's been very good. I'm very happy here. Um, I needed to adjust to the system a little bit because I did my bachelor's um, in the Netherlands. Um, and there it is, I, there you always have like three to four courses at a time. And here I have one course at a time for five weeks, uh, which I found a bit odd in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And now I really appreciate it because you can just focus on one course for five weeks um, and you don't have to do anything else. Uh, so that's been an adjustment, but in the end, very nice. Um, yeah, so I'm doing my last set of courses now. And then next semester for us is elective courses, internship or um, going abroad, which mm -hmm. is very nice. I yeah. feel like uh, LIU gives us a lot of different opportunities as well. Okay, excellent. Are you going abroad? Yes, I'm Are going you? to Oslo. Ah, yes. Still keeping it in the Nordics. Yes. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a bit more about the academic side. Um, you, you said um, you have courses, so you do five week kind of blocks. Is that, is that kind of common across social sciences? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's five or ten weeks. Okay. Yeah. And but you do one course at a time? Or? Uh, for most programs, mm -hmm. there are one or two programs that are different a bit uh, regarding that. But it's also, I would say, that you have small examinations all through the course. So then it's also very good to focus on the on the one course at the mm -hmm. time because it's not that you take the course and a big exam in the end. There are smaller things all over the course. It might be reflections for a seminar, it might be an oral presentation. So I think that's also making it good to have just one course at the time. Mm. So it's not, you know, it's not, it doesn't all kind of depend on your performance on one day at the end of those no. five weeks. It is more, you mm -hmm. know, if you miss that, you, you, you'll still, you could still be okay, provided mm -hmm. you've done everything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, so that's how students are, are assessed. Um, what about mandatory and elective courses? Is that, you know, is that typical that you can choose? Is that? Yeah, the first year is usually mandatory so that you study together the entire yes. class and then comes a semester as Fleur said, you mentioned you can choose your own courses that are offered. This, you always have courses that are given but you can also find other courses at other universities or at our university. And the last semester is, of course, master thesis. Okay. And tell me a bit more about the, the thesis. What, you know, what is it like? And how do you find the subject? And <laughs> if you, you haven't started yet. No, I haven't Not started. But you started thinking I about started, it? I definitely started thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But as I have these courses now, I'm like, oh, maybe I want to do climate science because I really like that course. But maybe there will be a next course which I really like as well. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to wait a little bit until summer and after my elective courses mm -hmm. as well and then choose. But I think it's very important to start thinking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you, I mean, from your perspective? Mm. I think it's an interaction between the students and the faculty that we actually discuss. Some, some of the faculty have projects that they want students to go into and do research within a research team. And others do more for society or for an industry that we just supervise them from here, but the task comes from somewhere else. And a lot of students have great ideas, things that we might not have thought about and realized that's a really interesting area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so mm -hmm. you do it and it's, it's in writing, you do it on your own. Can you do it in pairs or in groups or? In some, some programs, they mm -hmm. allowed it to be in pairs, mm -hmm. but uh, at the program you are, it's yeah. one well student, yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, you defend it? Or do you, do you, is there like an oral defense? So. Mm, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then another student have read it and come with comments. And also another teacher has read it and give comments all through. Okay. I think yeah. that's kind of 
you know, I, I studied in, in the UK and, and that was not the case. You just handed it in and you didn't have to defend it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I did yeah. have to defend it as defend well. It. So it's very scary. Yeah, I can imagine. But nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good experience. I think yeah. it's a really good experience. Yeah. Um, what about the, the, the way of, of, of teaching? Um, do you have like lectures, seminars, self-study? What is it like in your program? All of those. Okay. Um, most of the courses are structured similarly, where we have we read the literature, then we have a seminar about it. Uh, we have lectures in between as well. Some are mandatory, but most of them are not. Um, but it's still, it's very nice to go and, uh, and read all the literature. And then um, most of the time we have uh, we have to write a case study or a paper in the end. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, throughout we have these little moments where we are examined in some kind of way for pass or fail then. Um, and self-study, yeah, I'm doing a lot of self-study. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot of self-study in this program. Uh, so I sit at students who sit a lot in the library uh, reading and writing. Do yeah. you need tips? for kind of staying on top of it? Because it requires a certain exactly. level of self-discipline. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it's really good every week to just make a plan. I always make my, I plan my week on Sundays and then make a plan, okay, this is what I need to read this week. This is when I have to start. And it's very nice because we only have those five weeks. So you can really like already start and you, get into it quite quickly because you need to because you only have those five weeks mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. plan ahead I would say plan ahead yeah and um, what about all the other the other programs is this is this kind of a typical for, for social sciences for most mm -hmm. uh, I would say I mean those that are statistics or computational social science they of course have a lot of computer lab all the time so mm -hmm. and also when they gather and go through math for example or mm. also so they are a bit different uh, some other in business, they work a lot in project groups, so they have a lot of projects. So it differs a bit upon the discipline or the subject area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But one thing I also think is really good with having those programs is that you have friends, you know the friends. So you can have study groups that you organize by yourself, for mm -hmm. example, and also that it's interdisciplinary. It's very common, which you can see from the requirements for the program, that students have different backgrounds. And that, uh, for me as a teacher, that gives me something additional. Because we, if I would only go for one discipline, it would be talking to my old colleagues and friends. And, but this gives me input. I get a better understanding of the subject, hearing from some person with an agriculture background, talking to, with someone with a political science background. Mm. So I think that also enhances our programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which brings me to kind of who would who's the target stu student in, in, in a sense you know who who are we looking for who would thrive and, and really get the most out of a program here what would you well say? yeah so I, I wasn't wanted to add as well I, uh, I have a pretty small class we're only 15 people uh, and we're all from different backgrounds because my background is in tourism um, and obviously we worked a lot with sustainable tourism um, but then there's people from political backgrounds, from environmental science backgrounds, and that's really nice. Um, but I think for, for my program at least, um, you would want somebody that's really into sustainability, doesn't need to come from a social background or a natural mm -hmm. science background. Um, but I think it's important that you know how to read uh, mm -hmm. academic texts and write in good academic English. Because that's basically all we're doing. So I think that's one really important thing. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's important for yeah for all programs. Yeah, yeah. And you have to be self-going, as you said. Yeah. You have to plan yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are study guides, there are helps, but you have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. That you actually plan and see that yes, I do have to read this, and to get most out of the program. I mean, if you're just trying to get through the program, of course you don't learn as much as with interaction, with reading. Oh, there's optional reading. Why don't I read that too, to get some, some more mm -hmm. out of it? Mm -hmm. It is, it is mm -hmm. after all, master's level. I yeah. mean, we're talking, exactly. so, you know, this is something that I think, you know, you've done your bachelor to get, to get a job, you know, the mm -hmm. one you want, and this is in depth. So, you mm -hmm. know, I suppose there's a different kind of um, engagement yeah. In, yeah. from the students, I suppose. Um, so good English, they need to be proactive. 
mm -hmm. uh, right mindset and independent, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but the background for the program doesn't really doesn't generally doesn't matter as much. Um, for mine, I don't think it does that much. Mm -hmm. Sure. For some of the programs, mm -hmm. it really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't go and do computational social science if you, if you haven't worked with that kind of background mm -hmm. beforehand, or statistics and machine learning. You have to have a certain level of statistics, for mm -hmm. example, or programming. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, I think most of the programs are fairly broad mm -hmm. with the idea of, of the meeting. Mm -hmm. so, so I would add another thing that I, for myself, think is important curiosity. Mm. I like students who ask questions and want to interact and want to know more. Mm. So I think that's also important that yeah. you don't go there, oh I just listen and but ask questions. Mm. There are no discuss. stupid questions. Yeah. No. no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's a very important thing to, to, um, to um, have at the uh, top of your mind to get the most out of it. Um, so when you do the seminars by the way, so you said there were 15 of you, are yeah. there like several? Se I mean, are you in groups or is it all 15 of you in seminars? Uh, sometimes we're the whole class, but 15 is a bit much. So most of the time we go out into smaller groups, mm -hmm. which works very well because then you like, if you're just four people, you're really like forced to say something. Yeah. Um, so it gets really interactive and it's really nice with all of the different disciplines as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that generally how it's yep. done? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that it's, of course, it depends a bit on the program. Sometimes the students form the groups themselves. Sometimes the teacher form the group. Mm -hmm. It depends on mm -hmm. how we want. Yeah. Um, I thought we should move on a bit, um, seeing the time. We're going to open up for, for, for questions from, from you guys uh, shortly. But what is it like living in, in Ninshaping? And, and, you know, you've, you've come from, well, you're European. So, I yeah. mean, is there a big difference? Has there been any kind of culture clash? Um, yeah, there has been a little bit of adjustment, I would say, because, uh, yeah, I've lived in the Netherlands my whole life, um, but have strong bonds with Germany as well. So I'm used to this kind of a little bit Nordic mentality. Um, so moving to Linköping wasn't the biggest step. Um, but culturally, I would say it's um, sometimes a bit, sometimes the, the Swedish people hold back a little more than I'm used to, uh, maybe a bit more shy in the beginning, um, but after a couple of months, uh, I really start to get to know people de on a deeper level and it's been really nice. But I think that's one of the main things that I've noticed mm -hmm. here. But otherwise, um, as a Dutch person, it wasn't, it was easy. Everybody speaks English very well. Um, everybody's nice and helpful uh, and Linköping is great. The student life is amazing. Mm -hmm. There's so many associations, parties. Um, the campus is so nice because everything is just on this one big street and Campus Valla at least. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the library is very new and modern and yeah, I like it very much. And you live nearby? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah everything. I think in Linköping, almost everything is nearby, <laughs> especially because we bike everywhere, mm. which is super nice to me because I love biking, of course. I am Dutch. <laughs> yes, yes, you should. Um, and I don't have to pay for the bus. Yeah, um, yeah it's been really yeah. nice. It's expensive. I mean, that's always kind of, you know, it tends to be one of the, mm. the things yeah. that people go about Sweden. Oh, it's expensive. Is it? Um, actually, I think it's very comparable with the Netherlands at the mm. moment. Um, I, ha I, I don't think Linköping is that expensive. I think if you would go to one of the bigger cities, it will become a bit more expensive. But for me, it's kind of the same as in my bachelor, maybe a bit more, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but then studying here is free, yeah. which it isn't in the Netherlands. So mm -hmm. it, yeah. It kind of mm. makes up for exactly. it in, in, in a way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no tuition fee for European students. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's great. Right. So no application <laughs> fee and no yeah. tuition fee, but you have to show us that you are European, EU. So it's, it's the EU yeah. is, the, is the key uh, component. Um, I think we're actually going to open up for questions. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to, to certain things. But I think we should do that. Um, we have lots of other webinars. Um, so have a look at, at those on our, on our website. Um, if you look at liu.se slash education, you can find you can find links to the webinars. And we also have subject specific webinars that are recorded uh, from the past. Um, have a look at our Instagram account. 
You might see a familiar face on there. <laughs> our Instagram account is run by our students. So it's a new student every week. And have you done one or two sessions? Two sessions. Yeah. I just finished uh, yesterday with my last session mm -hmm. so you might have seen me on yeah. there <laughs> yeah if not go and check her out now um that's lean shopping university uh instagram there's also uh, a blog international students at liu yeah again yeah again yeah. i've i've <laughs> had many yeah. blogs on there yeah. i'm writing yeah. one this week so yeah. uh, and what's that on I'm not sure yet. I think I want to do it on um, like tr public transport because mm -hmm. I think that's super important if yep. you want to travel around a little bit here as well. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. a good one. Good, mm -hmm. good. Um, but you can find lots of information about how to apply, accommodation. Um, everybody who's writing in, our, in those blogs have been through, you know, what you, the whole process and, yeah. and everything. So they, they, have, they have lots of, of, of tips. Um, there's also a podcast called Fika With Us. <laughs> also been on there also twice. Been on there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think that's also really, really useful mm -hmm. to, to sure. kind of, you know, you get the tips, you, you mm -hmm. kind of find out maybe, you know, where you get secondhand things and, yeah. you know, cheapest food or, yeah. you know, just, just those things that you need mm -hmm. as a student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very casual. Yeah. So it's nice if you're just like in the bus or on the bike to just listen to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so those are really, really good, useful tips. Um, and that's the recorded part of, of, of this webinar is, is over uh, shortly. So if you do have questions, put the questions to us uh, through the, the questions box um, if you're watching this recording and, and we'll still get them. Uh, but that's all for the, for the recorded part.